investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, 18th of July. I want to look at this particular chart here right at this exact moment. Uh, this is my chart. Oh, look at that. This is the first time that we've breached the upper rectangle resistance line going all the way back to November, the week, uh, the month of November of 2022. There was a Dow high. I don't, in this particular chart, I don't put prices in. 20, uh, let's see, 34,712.28 was the high on the 13th of December 2022. It's taken until today, the 17th of July 2023, to just nick that and move above it. We haven't closed above it, but we moved above it. With the nine period moving average still strong at green. And that to me is really important. Why? Because it's the first time that the neckline in a year and a half has been attempted, I mean, we got close back on the 16th of June, we went to 34,588, but 200 points below, we got close again, uh, two points lower than that previous high of the 16th, it's 34,586, but here we are only Tuesday of the week, it means on a weekly, let's look at the weekly basis now, it means that this is new a new leg E, in the weekly chart, as I've shown you, there was a left side, right side price time match. It failed to get there at the exact fulcrum of the low that was made back in the back. I think it was April or something. Let me just check. That was March, the week of the 17th at 31,429. So this is extremely good action for three reasons. Number one is the daily chart as all the technical indicators extremely positive. I'm gonna I'm gonna say but and I'll get to the but in a minute. But the weekly chart has all of the indicators very strong. The the price is way above the green this is the weekly chart in the middle. The price is way above the nine period exponential moving average. The fourteen moving average is way above oh is below the, the uh, nine. That's important. The MACD is not great, but it's it's so far quite strong. It's actually a much steadier move to the upside than the huge move it had back in uh, December going to early January of this past year going to the beginning of this year. The stochastic's flat at 80%. It could be higher, but at least it's flat at 80%. On balance volume is in the slightly overbought area. Now, when you look at the, week, the monthly chart, it's really important. You see this pattern I call the falling axis is just a declining cone with an inside track repellent zone. We three months ago we tried to go no, actually it's four months ago we tried we hit it exactly, then we pulled back. Three months ago we went to it, went above it, closed well below it. Last month we closed nicely above it and the, the month is half over and so far we've made a new recovery high in the monthly chart. That means we've started a leg B because of today's move. We've started, I must double check that. It's better to just know that your numbers are exact. So the move to the high of 34,589 back in January has been taken out intra month, but that doesn't matter because you're looking at the waveform that says count E successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially on the way up. Oops, let me just get that back to uppercase. All right, there it is. Okay. Now the mouse, oh, 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 I didn't mean to do that. I don't know what I did. Mouse is a little bit. Clean this remotely, so sometimes it doesn't quite work. All right, let me move that away. Okay, here we go. So what we're looking at is within the context of new recovery highs. It's a really important moment. 
because it doesn't matter where it closes after this. What does matter is that you start at leg B in the monthly chart. You see the difference between the monthly chart of the Dow and the monthly Dow is up 212. The S&P is up. It's lagging a little bit. Dow is up 0.62%. Uh, S&P is up 0.20. It's up 910 at 45.32, but look at this leg C in the monthly chart. Now, I just wanted to do this. It isn't Technical Friday, but it doesn't matter. I'll explain it right now. No matter how I counted it, I've been discussing this ever since it happened. The month after it happened, there was a chapter with Roman candle at the exact high of 48.18.62, right there. Uh, let me double check for 48.08, 48. Yes, 18.62. January of 2022, that was the all-time high. And then you had Chapman with Roman Candle. I don't want to go into it now other than to say that Wick was really important to us and we saw it on the way down. We made trough A, trough B, and trough C. And then I said, no matter how I count it, all the way from that very first bar after leg B became a peak, B, I said, there should be leg C and D in the Chapman Wave methodology. It's really unusual for monthly charts to abort without going to at least a D. However, within that context, um, and you can probably tell where I am by the uh, sirens going, uh, what, what we're looking at is that if underneath that B, there's a peak A, a peak B, a peak C, a pullback, and then a peak D, that D, even though it's below the previous D, gets priority. So that's what I've been saying. Yes, we should expect that there should be higher highs to come, all-time highs to come, but we've still got the count in the monthly chart that needs to be notated. Because the MACD is cross-positive, I should wait until the end of the month. I should put an up arrow. I'm not from the 34.91 low. Okay, I just wanted to go through those. It was really important just to clarify what was going on because I had a number of questions about it. What happens if we make a new, new recovery highs? How does it impact the monthly chart? Now you know. So the QQQ, which is the NDX 100 trading vehicle, is uh, a little bit weaker today, down $1.62 at 380.90. And this is what I've been talking about to subscribers. We've got some kind of a divergence here between the indices that's been happening for about two, three weeks. It's been becoming, it's becoming noticeable. But you've got this cup formation in the Invesco QQQ Trust series, whereby the monthly chart is in a gray leg. Hey, why is it gray? Because it's under the previous high, which is the peak. Gee, I don't want to get into all that right now. Other than to say the monthly chart is important. It is broken above in an exact time sequence from the left side to the right side symmetry called bar symmetry. Uh, we've broken to a higher high. We can have a little digestion. It was a leg D at a P at, at peak D's in the in the Chapman wave methodology. That's where other things can happen. Your objective is to get to the D, and then you start to decide exactly what happens from that moment on. It can recycle up. You can have a deeper correction. But right here is a little bit of caution for the QQQ. Uh, still acting extremely well. In the deck chart, monthly chart is very strong. Uh, and it made a higher high this week, so you can't get a big D until Friday a week. Now, there was nothing this Friday, but the following Friday. I'll be back in a moment. There's a lot to discuss. Let me just go back. I just want to show you what the Dow's doing here. I just want to maintain that upside move. Uh, yes, it's up 207 and 34,790. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, uh, folks. So what I want you to just show you quickly before we go back to some of the, the areas we were looking at before. Look, U.S. Steel is finally coming on quite strong. It's about 42 cents at 25,002. Caterpillar. This is a really, again, like, like U.S. Steel, deep cyclical, heavy-duty equipment, up three at 260 in a leg C. Uh, the weekly chart, look at this beautiful cup formation, trying to target the uh, mid-260s. Uh, leg D goes to peak D in the monthly chart. Look at PAVE. This is the uh, ETF. Global X U.S. Infrastructure and Development ETF. Uh, you remember, I've been talking about this for some time. Every time I talk about it, uh, I, I try to ha help you by saying, in the Chapman methodology, when you get an alternate count, G slash C, especially after Chapman instant restart, which this did right there, the 30 area, consider that there's a really good chance, as long as the technicals are still good, that you're going to go to a D and then you've got to be careful. It doesn't mean to say you're going to turn down, but that's where you've got to be careful to say what's happening next. D in the daily, D in the weekly. Uh, this is PAVE, all-time high as we're speaking. Global X, US, this is so bullish for 2023. Um, yes, of course, you could get a very sharp pullback. But as far as I can tell, um, if you have the infrastructure stocks, if you have these deep cyclicals moving like this, that is really a big, big market positive. So I had a question about is Rivian, R-I-V-N, a Chevron Wave uh, Stork Lake formation? And the answer is no, it isn't. It's coming up right now. Let me just refresh. There it is. Oops, I said it's coming up. There it is. So, no, that is just an arch just a beautiful, what a spectacular move from the 13 level about three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Goes straight up right through the 200 period moving average, goes to an E and an F. Now, this is the one I had a little trouble with. Is this a brand new start over here? Because everything turned around at that 13 level. Is this really a peak B? and not an F, I decided I would just keep the flow that was going um, in the notation. This is where <sighs> the simplest thing is to say, that was a peak D, it pulled back, the nine period went pink, 
and now you've got something very fresh. So I'm just going to put this in here to say F slash B. I should probably say it's more B slash F because of the strength. Look at the way Rivian has pulled back. The nine, it, it just touched the 9, and the 9 is way above the 14 period moving average. And there's a single leg up in the, in the weekly chart, a very strong leg B. It makes a, and a continuation in leg B. If it can go one penny above the high that was made four sessions, three, four sessions ago of 26.89, if it's this week and it goes to 26.90, Rivian has gone to an extension of leg B. And then I have to be considered that that is not a GSAC. That really is a problem. Probably see, there's nothing to say here other than this is a really strong chart. The question came in, is it a stalk leg formation? No. This, so far, this is an arch. If it extends sideways for about another... Uh, four sessions between 26 and say 20. What would I call that low? And if it makes another low, 23, 26, below 23, 26, maybe it's a rectangle formation, but so far, no, it's not. Now, it's the right idea because it's definitely a leg going up, single leg like that, but no, it doesn't have to be a stalk leg. Other question that came in was let me just get this. Uh, Oh, I haven't been able to even look at my email just yet. Uh, da -da, Rivian, yep, I did that. As a, can you review a fuel cell? Okay, sure. Fuel cell, F-C-E-L. It's an alternate. Okay, here we go. Fuel cell, F-C-E-L. This is uh, a fuel cell energy electric service company and a natural... So I knew I'd, I'd use this as an abbreviation, GNW, gas and biogas, natural gas and biogas. So it's trading at uh, 2.50 right now, unchanged. This is a very strong leg A, gray A to the upside. Why is it great? Because the MACD is good, but the stochastic is still only at 72%, not at 80%. The 9 is over the 14. I like this very much, and I believe that this particular phase we're in right now is seeing a lot of juggling between the, in, the, in the whole energy source area. In other words, it doesn't have to be natural gas. Oh. Not talking about natural gas. Another question came in about NPH. Let me show you the two together. So it's a slightly different. There we go. ENPH. Well, I'll finish this up first. The weekly chart is showing you that it's a real struggle to get out of this like a rectangle formation. Let me just draw that in here. A rectangle formation. And that just says it could be, I mean, percentage-wise, if fuel cell goes from 250 where it is now to 280, I mean, that's 11, over 11%. That's a real nice percentage. But it looks to me like on a very short basis, it's just a little top. It's struggling a little bit. Don't even look at the monthly chart because it's been trading for about two years under the pink, the, under the pink and the pink is under the 9, 14 period moving average. So <laughs> this is not a very good chart. So within that context, what we are looking at is the um, fuel cell at 249, unchanged right now. It has parameters of 240 as key support, and if it can start to trade at 258 in the next two days, that's just great. Now it can tackle this bar of earlier in June. They can go all the way to two, about 268, 273. Hope that helps. So far, it's acting very well. Now I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. If I got a break coming up or not? Um, is there something happening that I should know? I'm drinking a Tiger TV. That's already moved on. Usually it's the other way around. So I'm going to just quickly check with my engineer. I don't hear anything. My engineer says uh, nothing. So I just keep going. Here we go until I hear the music. Uh, we've got a, a pattern that says EN phase, N phase, ENPH. We were waiting for that leg D to see if it was even possible. We didn't have it, actually, for subscribers. Um, but it's finally got into that 188, 192 area. Today it's hit 192.22 after that huge gap down. Just look at this. You won't believe it when you see it. Look at that. Oops, wrong, wrong chart. This is the daily. That's what I want. I want to look at this. Okay. So it's start to fill in the gap a little bit. 
and I, there is something going on that I'm not aware of, and I just need to make one more check up one thing here. Uh, am I still on? <laughs> just checking it out. Now we'll see what happens. So end phase. This is in the this is in the natural gas area, and I haven't heard back yet. So something a little weird is going on. So this is a stock that's trading generally in the 220 area sometime in April. I was a little confused there. April the 25th, the 228 was the high. The very next day, the high was 183. We went all the way down to 115 now. It's running. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, take it. This is our see you in a moment. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So I had a question about Google. Uh, Google, 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 C shares. Um, yes. So what's that, what's happened here is it hit 129.53, and that was on the 16th, 16th, 7th, the 7th of June. Pulls back, comes down, makes a trough D, has a good rally up until yesterday. Today it's giving back some. 
It's an F in the weekly chart and a C in the monthly chart. Now, what's really important about Google's action lately is that if you look at the technicals, look how strong when it made that high back on the 7th of, Ju uh, of June, the MACD had already pushed much, much higher on those double tops that were made at C peak C around about May, pulls back. The stochastic was very strong, started pulling back. So there was already a divergence between the action in the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, and the slow stochastic and the on-balance volume. But look what happened. That nine-period moving average, the green nine-period moving average, was so strong that it took until the 26th of June before it crossed negative. It crossed negative and stayed negative until that big two-day spike uh, starting on the 13th of July, 14th of July, 17th of July, that's Monday, yesterday, made a new recovery high from the high that was made at 129.53. This high was 127, I think, 127.78, and now it's pulling back. And if you look at the technicals, they are much, much weaker. Yes, the stochastic's at 81%, but the MACD is much weaker. The, the 9 did flip over to positive, but it could quite easily slip again. So I'm a, I'm a little cautious here on Google, and that goes for a number of these really mighty uh, uh, NASDAQ-type stocks. They've had a fantastic move, and they're kind of in this digestive phase, which is partly why we're looking at the QQQ today being a little bit weaker. Now, the question is, oh, did I read that correctly? Did you say you've got calls? As I can see it right now, if instead of being underneath yesterday's low, which was 124.50, Maybe we nicked it, but right now you should be at about 124.61 and sit here at 123.48. If, if we had that just a high-level consolidation, I say there's a really good chance that over the coming two days, if the market can continue higher, that is the Dow and the uh, out of the four key indices, the Dow, the S&P, the Qs, and the IWM, if I'd even include the SMHs as a sector that's really important. If at least three out of the five can rally into Wednesday, Thursday, I think then Google can have a little bit of a pop. But I think that that whole area, if you look at what I normally do, is someone asked me if I could go through the Chapman Wave uh, methodology. Of course, we sometimes spend three days on that. So, it's, But I can give you the core, and the core is very simple. It's identifying the lowest low bar, then counting each successively higher peak, alphabetized, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but it's at D, the fourth highest peak that other things can happen. Look at this. Here's your peak D at 129.53. Look what happened. Sharp pullback. Here's your peak D in the weekly. It's pulled back for about four or five sessions, then it broke out. Uh, let's see that. No, that's not an instant restart. We'll break out to what we're calling an F right now. And the monthly chart is in C with the technicals improving. That should go to D over the coming months. So uh, I'll go through this as we, as we move along. I'll, I'll talk about the different techniques. But most importantly, Google, if you're along the calls, if we were only down a f like 20 cents, I'd say, okay, but you're down a dollar sixty with a, a lousy candle. The 9 is still over the 14. The MACD has turned up. Stochastic's at 81, uh, 81%. All of that is good. On balance, volume is a bit weak in the, in the daily chart. That weak chart is fabulous. So I don't know when your calls are for. Your calls are for really soon. Let me just see if I can read that. Uh, let's see. Tempted to take another half off. Closed. Uh, okay. Uh, so now I'm having ter trouble finding it now. Uh, basics of Chapman. Oh, Goog. Uh, please. Oh, that's a different question. Basil. Uh, Goog, please. September 120 calls. Oh, I didn't see that. September calls. All I'm going to say is 120. Oh, uh, you might have to. You might have to see a little bit of a pullback here. But looking at September, I don't have any problem with that. Oh. <laughs> 
That's great. Oh, there was like a, uh, it was coming, yeah, but uh, options expiration, but no. You're looking good. I, I would just hold them. That's the way to play this, looking out long term in Google. Uh, that was a question that I, I like very much because it says that you've got patience and that you're looking at this both as a constructive position to have in a portfolio as well as a speculative one so you know exactly uh, what your what your loss will be. So let me just show you this here. So you're looking at the what, what's the core of the Chapman methodology. Question came in. Let me if I can move this without messing everything up. Let's see if that's working. There we go. Uh, Chapman, there it is. Okay. So the idea is that you try to identify the lowest low bar. You count each successively higher peak. You alphabetize them. Uppercase on the way up, A. Next one by one penny if you take out that peak on the left side, in this case A, without breaking the original starting low, you just keep counting alphabetically. Uh, let's say that's 20. 20.01 20 starts, leg B. It's a floating letter. B stays leg B, leg B, until it makes a peak, and it becomes a peak B. That peak B can pull back all the way as long as it doesn't take out the starting low, and then you can go all the way back for leg C. It doesn't, it doesn't have any connotation to the left side other than other technical things say that's your support, that's trough, etc. But in, in the waveform, that, that's what can happen. It says, yeah, you can get to a D, but sometimes it's a really whippy ride. And other times it's really quite easy. So here it is, take C and then D. And then you can see I've got a, a dashed line that says you can keep going down much. Look at this on the left. Here's Google. Look how sharp you went down from that peak D. But you could also, within three bars, get something called the instant restart. That says you can continue your wave count and have alternate count. Next higher peak, leg above D by one penny, starts leg E slash A. Then F slash B, G slash C. And I just showed you what was the chart I showed you before that actually eventually went to the D. Well, I'm not going to remember right now. But let's look at the IWM. Uh, okay. Yeah, there it is. This is the very one that we were talking about. There's your G. So this is your instant restart. E, F slash B, pulls back, and then it goes G slash C, and now it's in a leg D. Very nice move. And this is a very important move in the, in the uh, IWM Russell 2000 because it's saying, hey, finally. Um, so, hey. Itself. So we are looking at the small caps hitting it in the weekly chart, hitting another technique that I use. This, this is called inside wedge target resistance line, and it's right there now. I'll be back in a moment. That's a chapter target the initials hour, and we will be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So I had a question yesterday, which I didn't see until earlier today. Uh, about VFC, and VFC is the VF core. Um, it's trading at 19.45, it's up 35 cents. So when I talk about uh, resistance levels, look at this rectangle formation here. It starts off as a V, and then it stalls, and it just keeps trying to bump up against this resistance in the rectangle formation. And what we've seen very often is that a rectangle can stay in that pattern for a long period of time, become a narrow rectangle. But look what's happening. The MACD is good. Stochastic's at 74%, just under the 80% level. On balance volume is a little bit uh, off the highs. The nine is flipped to positive, and there's a nice candle today. And it keeps doing that, but it won't. Now, what I would say is this. If VFC is able to close, it's the same as we're looking in the uh, the dark news cloud cover chart that we showed of the Dow earlier on, where that uh, level that says 43,800 is something a little different. This is the same thing here. If this can start to trade in the 20.45 area, it's only a dollar higher. That shouldn't be a big deal. But look at the way the stock has failed. Every single arch formation becomes a dreaded H. And then it fails and goes lower, 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 lower. Monthly charts are horrible. Weekly charts had very strong technicals with no price appreciation at all. That's not the way, that's not what you want to see. You want to see everything in sync. Technicals are confirming price movement, price movement is confirming technicals, etc. You're not seeing that yet. And that says to me that unless it can start to trade for three to five sessions out of maybe even 10, in other words, for a whole week and a half, it was able to hit the 20, what's that candle high right there? So this candle high of the 19th of May was 20.49. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. If we can get into that, the top of that candle and hold it, just to turn this into a base rather than resistance, that'll be important. So I did that. So there was a question that came up, which I thought was a very good question. I don't know if I can deal with it right now. Um, oh, the question is, uh, thank you for going over the Chapman Wave. I'm fascinated. Why are there two Ds on the daily end? That's the, dollar, that's the Dow. Look, if you look carefully, you will see that it isn't just a D. It went, it went to INDU. There it is. Look, look what happened. It went to a trough at 32,586 with an up arrow. I'd circle that to say every peak needs to be counted. And that goes peak A, peak B, gray, and then it becomes upgraded to a buy mode and goes to C and D. And then at 34,588 on the 16th of June, it pulls back sharply, makes a little doji candle. Those doji candles are really important in my work, either turning points or midpoints. And it started to move to the upside. It went peak gray, peak A, gray, peak B. Pulls back, and then all of a sudden, it pops above and it goes to a C, stalls right at the 34,588, it was actually 86 level, and now it's in leg D. 
So this is just not two Ds. This is D with a restart of a new buy, buy signal to buy mode. Now, one of the things that I've done is when it started to fail, and I looked at the unbalanced volume saying, gee, it's not participating, it's not overboard anything, that there should be a pullback instead of getting what we usually do, which is on the move to the upside, get the three times long UDOW, and on the short side, we get the SDOW. I was just a little uncertain, so we took a small position in the DOG, which is one-to-one -one short, and that should today be taken out because it is so strong. It hasn't been taken out yet. It, I think it's just, yep, I think it's just been taken very tiny, one point something loss, one percent loss. Uh, but that the reason why I did that is because we were looking at the divergence between the different indices. At that point, the S&P had broken above its left side high. The Dow hadn't. So now what we're looking at is this is one of the reasons why we've kept our longs from way back. Remember, we went long here in October. We've kept that long position and the three times long, but we've had trading positions. We had another one back here in March. Um, still got that core position. We're just trading around it, and I'll have to do an analysis. But one of the things that we're looking at here is that the stocks that have participated the best have continued to participate. For instance, we have a stock called N. Here we go, E N. VX is the symbol, and OVIX. So we're in at the 16s. Here it is at 23. And that was just uh, 28th of June. I mean, in other words, what is it, three weeks? And here it is up um, seven points from that entry. But that's not the issue. The issue is we got taken. We, we wanted to add. And instead of looking at the nine and saying it is so strongly above the 14, the MACD is still expanding. The nine, the 200 period moving average uh, is way down here. It was a great uh, projection to uh, a trajectory to the upside. It's just a rocket ship to the upside. Um, it hasn't pulled back enough to get that to, to add to the position. And that's the problem. The ones that have been really working. Uh, are just absolutely fabulous. So um, that can happen as well. So I, if I was sticking to the rule, the rule is if the nine is over the 14, as long as it stays that way, don't think of shorting until you get other indicators that really give you, uh, or, or don't think of exiting short too, too much because it's in a positive position. And that's what we've got to look at. So the SMHs start to stall here. But there's nothing wrong. The nine is still good. But the MACD is only just barely positive. Stochastic's good at 85%. So this just says that we've got to use this more as an indicator right now because it made a – let me just give you this right here. This is the weekly chart. The weekly chart hasn't gone above the 160.70 high of last week. It's had two sessions to do that. It hasn't done it yet. But this will become a peak D in the weekly chart of the semiconductor index, the SMHs, if there's no new high this week, a new recovery high, that is. Well, it turns out 159.42 was the, the all-time high back in November. So at this particular point, that will be an all-time high if it breaks above 160.70. Isn't that incredible? Here we are uh, with a lot of people extremely negative and extremely nervous, and yet the semiconductors at all-time highs. The cyclicals, let's see what the XLI is doing. The XLI is the industrials. Uh, haven't gone. Yes, they have. So the high today's high is 109.98. The high on Wednesday of last week was 108. 9.88. Hoo, hoo, hoo. One penny more. We've got an entire week to do it. One penny more and it extends. So this is the other. So the stalk leg formation that was asked of me about uh, Rivian, this is a real one. So that just says long move to the upside. It looks like a leg. Then you get the oval body. And then you get the neck, and we're in the neck right now. And that says when this comes back down at some point, which it will at some point, this is the level that you got to monitor closely, the high of 104.18, seven points above that right now. And this is the select S&P Select Industrial Spider Fund. That is also very, very positive. 
Would it go positive? Oh, 92. We just hit 92. It's just started a leg in. It's extended leg in the weekly chart. As we were talking, I'll be right back. Russell Chapman. We'll be back. Ciao. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, bro. So I had a question about PGR, the progressive course. This is the insurance company, one that has that crazy, the crazy ads that you can never quite understand, but they're always there chuckling away. Um, yeah, so it's trading at 121.88, down seven cents. It did gap down. It's trying to fill the gap. You said you've got you're waiting for it. I would wait a little longer. I have a left side, right side price time match that says there is a chance that the low that was made back in October of last year, the week of the 14th of 110.80, 110.04, even though it ran all the way to 150, that you could come back and test that. But if you want to see the gap filled, just have patience because the 200 period moving average of 130, it's only nine points higher, but nine points is a lot for this stock, um, is such resistance. I, I just give it a, I'd give it a timeout. 
let's just remind me again what's today, Tuesday, maybe Friday or maybe Monday or Tuesday. Let's look at it again, see what's happened. I don't think there's a rush to get into this. Let me just sum up for you as I'm looking at this right now for the market because uh, handing over to Steve Rose should be a great show as always. Uh, 34,902 right now, up 318. This is really positive. Uh, it, it's positive because of this pattern that I showed you with the dark news cloud cover, resistance that cloud. It looks like a lot of that is dissipating. We're oh, nicely now above that level. Are we going to turn the 34,000 200 to 33,800 into fabulous support over the next month or so. I, I think that's the way it's looking. I like what I'm seeing very much. So that's the Dow. And if you're looking at the S, so the Dow, the close today, if it's able to hold 170 points or higher into the two o'clock time frame, that's going to be very important for a good, strong close. And if you're looking at uh, any failure, it says, some news, something happens, all of a sudden you're looking at a plus 60 after 3 o'clock. That'll be very negative. So far, it's been very good. Hold on. Nice action going. We've got Steve Rose, great programming here. Um, I should see you to later today with Tom. Have a great day. Check out Mobile and Call Daily News. There I have webinars that you can check all these techniques that I talk about.